Good afternoon. I'm a director of Abastomani Astrophysical Observatory, which is one of the oldest and leading scientific institutions of Georgia. It was established in 1932. It was the first observatory that was built in mountains in Soviet Union. It was placed in a perfect place, uh, location for astronomical observations. As you can see from this picture that was taken from the observatory, the skies, amazing skies, an amazing Milky Way uh, above it. And I've been working there for 25 years, and my recent work is about how galactic cosmic rays, which are remnants from supernova explosion, penetrate into our atmosphere and affect it. So-called sky-earth connections. But today I will talk about other sky-earth connections, deeper ones, between the upper atmosphere and the ground beneath our feet. I want to present a remarkable talk, the work uh, made by uh, the late observatory scientist Luisa Fishkova, whom I met when I just started working there. She was an atmospheric physicist, and um, she studied the upper atmosphere, the edge of the space. And she found that looking into the atmosphere, you can actually predict one of the most powerful forces of our planet, earthquakes. And this work of hers has a potential, great potential, with much further investigation to predict, to make reliable prediction of earthquakes one day, which will save lots of lives. Let me tell you about this little-known but very important figure, Luisa Fischkola. She was one of the leading scientists, not only in uh, our observatory, but also uh, in the uh, Soviet Union, uh, among atmospheric physicists. And she did lots of researches of atmosphere, atmosphere and uh, one of it was this one. And she led an incredible life, which is worth making a movie about. She was born in 1924 in Vitebsk, Belarus, in a Jewish ghetto. And she survived World War II several times. She escaped Holocaust from moving from her hometown to Leningrad right before it was occupied by Germans, and she lost all her family there. And in Leningrad, she survived this brutal siege of the city and the terrible thing that happened during evacuation. And then the war is over and she graduated from Leningrad University and was looking for a job. And she accidentally met Evgeny Haradze, who was the director of Abastomani Astrophysical Observatory, and he offered her a job and she moved to Georgia where she spend the rest of her life. So, one morning in 1991, I was walking to my office and I met Louisa, who has just finished her night observations, and she told me that it was going to be an earthquake in a few hours, somewhere in the region. And I asked her, how did she know? And she said that she observed the rapid increase of the night glow signal, which usually happens a few hours before the major shock is going to strike. And uh, I was confused, I couldn't make it. What night glow has to do with earthquakes underneath? What is the connection? Well, as it is said, some animals sense earthquakes before it happens. They become anxious and behave strangely, right? But what something in the air, tens of kilometers high, can feel that is going to happen a few hours ahead? This is a puzzle. But later I found about it, and uh, so I'll explain it to you. So uh, this, uh, let's 
start with uh, what uh, a night glow is, or night air glow. This uh, picture is made from uh, a satellite. And, uh, our sky is never completely dark. Even if we remove all stars, it will still shine very weakly. This is because of the atmosphere. Atmosphere has its own light. And this atmospheric emission is called air glow, or night glow during night. And um, this is very weak. We cannot see it by our eyes, but we can measure it and its um, changes with the sensitive instruments. On this picture, you can also see that our atmosphere is made of many layers. It's a troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, exosphere, and it's also ionosphere with different layers. And our Earth is also a huge magnet with a magnetic field around. And all of the things, they interact to each other in a very complicated way. Also, the Earth's surface and the sun has a huge influence on this. And this has an impact on our lives through weather, communications. This is why it is so important to investigate our atmosphere in many different ways. So, Abbas Dumani is placed, as I said, in a unique place, and the atmospheric studies started in 1940s. And it also happens that Abbas Dumani is in a seismically active zone. This is the laboratory of atmospheric study that was established there, and uh, these are the instruments. Uh, Luisa Fischkov and her colleagues uh, studied the atmosphere and observed it using all these instruments. For 40 years, they collected a unique data during this time. Um, in uh, uh, the 1970s, some scientists noticed some connections between changes of the air glow and earthquakes. So Luisa uh, Fishkova and her colleague, they collected the, their measurements that they did and um, then uh, data from seismic stations about earthquakes around Abbas Tumani. She put them together, analyzed them, and here is what she found. This is from her observations, from her research, uh, which was done from Abbas Tumani. This is five consecutive nights from 2025, January 1982. Uh, one, two, three, four, five nights, you can see here. And um, on x-axis, there are hours from 20 to 4 or 5 in the morning. And uh, on a y-axis, it's intensity of night glow signal. So in, uh, the, uh, during the first three nights, these are the uh, usual normal behavior of night glow. But the, on the fourth night, you can see this spike, this sudden increase of the intensity uh, around midnight. And five hours later, at five in the morning, the day, 4.1 magnitude earthquake stroke 55 kilometers from Abbas Tuman. And this is just one example out of many uh, that Luisa Fishkova found. And uh, she and her colleagues published uh, several papers in scientific journals, and uh, one of it was published in a highly ranked journal of Analysis Geophysica in 1985, which is still cited by other scientists until today. So, uh, but what is the connection? Uh, what is the physical mechanism of all the things? Uh, Fishkova and other scientists, they suggested their theories to explain it. Uh, they are still debatable. And I'm going to explain one of it, uh, this theory that was uh, suggested by observatory scientists. So, when, uh, before uh, the earthquake happens, there's going to be a huge preparation underground. The tectonic plates, they move to each other and they build the pressure. And it's going to happen during uh, several hours and even days before the major uh, shock. 
and this uh, builds a pressure and uh, 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 Earth's electric field changes about it and it uh, um, sends kind of noise into the atmosphere and uh, the atmospheric uh, acoustic gravity waves are generated in the atmosphere which is not to be confused with gravitational waves which is completely different thing. So this acoustic wave is a kind of noise but we cannot hear it. Uh, uh, they uh, travel in the atmosphere and they make free electrons to strike ions, make atoms and release uh, photons. And so this sudden release of huge number of photons, this is what makes this night glow shine, this spike to happen. But we have a problem here. So the, we, we can say that this is kind of of uh, Earth that Earth cries out via atmosphere uh, that it's going to shake. And we have to, er, to learn how to listen to this. But the problem here is that we don't know where it is going to happen. It's around a few hundred kilometers around the observation point. So we need the observations for many other things, like uh, geological observations of tectonic movements underground, and uh, temperature changes, uh, red and gas emission measurements, and many others, both ground-based and uh, from space, uh, like uh, GPS and other instruments. And uh, there are several um, international programs that are going to study the connection between air glow and earthquakes. And this work has a potential to lead to a precise prediction of earthquakes one day, which will save lots of lives. And this is amazing that this work was done in Abastumani Astrophysical Observatory decades ago. Uh, and there are also many other works uh, done by other scientists in other fields in our observatory. Uh, and we have lots of data accumulated and uh, photographic plates that can contribute one day to um, uh, science in the future. Uh, unfortunately, this hardship in 1990s in the country had affected uh, the scientists as well including uh, Luisa Fishkova, who died in 1993. There was horrible times. We didn't have electricity for winter when it was minus 20. We had no gas, no heat. We had to cut trees to heat. And uh, astronomers, engineers, and other people, they turned to agriculture. And they planted potatoes around the observatory, and they built, had a cattle, raised cattle, and. Uh, built farmhouses and uh, were completely isolated from the rest of the world and it lasted for decades. So this is the picture made from those times. You can see these cows beneath the telescopes. Uh, though there are some connections between uh, astronomy and uh, agriculture. So there are uh, constellations of Taurus and Milky Way and things like that, right? Anyway, um, uh, this was a long time ago, and I'm happy to say that uh, today the things are much better than they were uh, 20 years ago, and the funding was raised by the government, and we're integrated into Ilya State University, we're raising a new generation of scientists. We're involved in many international collaboration, which is vital for us. And I'm kind of optimistic, quite optimistic, by the way, about the future. And we'll build new telescopes and instruments. But there is very important that we must not lose the knowledge that was generated in the past by the scientists like Luisa Fishkova. We must rediscover their discoveries. Thank you.